Welcome, dear member and fellows of the CINP. I am Pierre Blier, the acting president of CINP for the next 45 minutes. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed the meeting so far. Uh, there are other very exciting presentations still coming up. And uh, we can move to the next slide to go straight into the uh, meeting. So I will uh, provide you with a, a brief report. And so actually uh, we have, we and the ICS has prepared a very nice detailed and extensive uh, business report uh, for this, uh, for the last uh, two years. And then we'll move on to finances with uh, Professor Ikeda, our secretary, Dr. Gary, uh, Gabriela Gobi and uh, the chair of the International Scientific Program Committee, Dr. John Crystal is with us and uh, will provide a summary of the process that went into place with the numerous input from our fellows and members. And then as chair of the Fellowship uh, uh, and Awards Committee, I will go through uh, the awardees for this, for this year. Dr. Ikeda was the chair of the Credentials and Membership Committee Dr. Siegfried Casper as past president, and this is in our bylaws. It was the chair of the uh, nominations committee, so he'll uh, tell us about the process. And then uh, Dr. Grace uh, will uh, tell us actually the fantastic job he's done uh, over the past two years and the great successes of our uh, uh, open access uh, journal. And then I will proceed on to the installation of the uh, officers, those who are staying and the new ones, and of course, the end over uh, to uh, Professor Zohar as the next acting president. Next slide, please. So first, with report to uh, CINP management and, and, and governance. Uh, I can tell you that the, the board was uh, fully dedicated uh, to the success of CINP. These were really tumultuous times uh, when we had to uh, take into consideration the, the pandemics, make adjustments. And so this was uh, very important. The executive committee uh, member met uh, many times, many more times than in the normal uh, periods. And so to make these accommodations uh, to make CINP survive. This is very important uh, because organizations such as a CINP has to have enough financial reserve to be able to uh, sustain two meetings if catastrophes happen. A catastrophe happened, but thanks to the uh, hybrid uh, meeting of the, of the association that we were able to have, we were able to keep the uh, CINP afloat and actually not lose from our reserve. And this is what Professor uh, Ikeda will show us. So we've had uh, contract negotiations with Oxford University uh, Press. Dr. Grace will tell us more about it, but bottom line is what we were very pleased uh, with the Oxford. However, uh, given the success of the journal, we were in a position to uh, carry out the negotiations to increase the benefits for CINP. And other problems is uh, uh, members and, uh, and fellows falling by the wayside with respect to their membership status. And uh, we've implemented an automatic membership renewal. So in the upcoming year, uh, this will take place. And hopefully uh, this will allow us to keep more of our members because we've had uh, a long list of members who have uh, dropped from membership. Uh, I've written personal mails and other members of EC as well to try to get them back, uh, back on board. And with respect to best uh, practice for management services, so our contract uh, with the International Conference Service of Vancouver is coming to an end uh, at the, after the Montreal or after the Montreal meeting. And best practice is to go out and look for bids. And so Professor Zohar, Ikeda, myself, and a hired consultant have worked very hard to get bids from uh, six uh, companies. And uh, we have uh, retained uh, four companies uh, 
So right now, three companies plus uh, ICS as well are, are still in the competition. So our objectives are certainly uh, fostering the global scientific uh, community and decrease the overall burden of, of mental illnesses. So actually, as an organization, and I'm sure all of you were very sad that we were set uh, back with what's going on in, in Ukraine, and I've circulated uh, my position with which uh, everybody agreed uh, on this uh, major conflict in the middle of, of Europe, and we deplore the uh, setback, because I think this conflict will have, and already has, uh, very big impact on mental health and for uh, decades to come. We uh, encourage uh, diversity in, in neuropsychopharmacology, and uh, you'll see this in the uh, presentation of the, of the new officers of the executive uh, committee. Uh, so we have very nice uh, worldwide distribution of our officers, uh, very nice uh, male to female, uh, gender distribution and an absolutely perfect uh, linguistic distribution, whereas uh, our seven members each have a different native language, of course, plus English. And so that tells us that we're able to communicate any of us. The whole EC actually can communicate with uh, basically anybody around the world in the, in the different languages. So I would like to express my gratitude to uh, all EC members, and I'm passing the baton to our treasurer, Professor Ikeda, please. I'm Kazutaka Ikeda, uh, current CNP treasurer. I served as the CNP treasurer for four years, and the term has come to an end. As you know, large degree of facility, uh, financial agility was required during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we moved the 2020 Congress to 2021 and changed the format from in-person to virtual and changed our investments from high-risk ones to medium-risk ones. The overall profit from the Congress ensured a positive financial outcome in 2021. As we carefully plan and closely monitor the progress of both the 2022 Hybrid World Congress and the 2023 In-Person Congress in Montreal, profit profitability from annual Congress will cover expenses and regrow our financial reserves. We will generate over 60,000 US dollars in membership dues revenue in 2022 partially due to the high interest in the hybrid Congress, which helps to uh, drive new member enrollments. So the current total value of the CNP funds is approximately 1.6 million US dollars. So I'd like to express my appreciation to CNP members, Congress attendees, and Congress sponsors. Especially, I thank uh, three CNP presidents, uh, current president, Professor Pierre Briel, uh, past president, Professor Siegfried Kasper, and president-elect, Professor Joseph Zohar, and the other uh, members of the uh, executive committee and uh, financial and budget committee members for their fruitful collaboration. I also thank CNP head office staff for their uh, assistance and the auditors for providing the excellent uh, advice. So next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So this table shows the 2020 funds and the 2021 provisional funds. Although membership income slightly decreased in 2021, uh, it has already exceeded 60,000 US dollars in 2022. And we made 178,000 US dollars the profit by virtual Congress in 2021. We could decrease our expenditures in 2021 to 318,000 US dollars. And we had a positive financial outcome, approximately 25,000 US dollars in 2021. 
So I'm confident that the incoming treasurer, Professor Min Chi Huang, will prove to be an excellent successor for this position who will fulfill the duties with the utmost diligence. So thank you very much. Hello. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. So uh, thank you, everybody. It's uh, a pleasure uh, to do my report as uh, secretary. It was uh, really a great experience for me to be secretary of this big association, uh, CMP. And uh, it's also a learning experience. I'm learning from uh, a lot of you. So uh, here's my report. During the pandemic, uh, we have a more frequent executive committee meetings and we have continuously monitor COVID situation during monthly meeting. So we took the decision at the end to have another a second uh, in the CMP meeting virtual because of the pandemic situation. And uh, next, uh, we are uh, under negotiation with the Oxford University Press for a new contract for our uh, journal, International Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology. We have an increased number in uh, membership income as well as uh, number of members. Now we have more than 600 full members at the CMP. Uh, we are preparing the future uh, World Congress uh, um, in uh, Montreal next year. That will be in person, of course. Um, another task of my um, involvement in a CMP was also to increase the inclusion, equity and diversity. So uh, CMP needs uh, more uh, women, more uh, young people and in particular more people also from non-developed countries. Recently, I was invited also by Dr. Carmen Sandi from Switzerland to join as a CMP de ALBA, that is a network towards diversity and equity in brain science, and where many associations in brain science Join, join this network to increase inclusion, equity and diversity. So we are also discussing within the CMP about novel strategy for uh, optimized teaching. Now we know that after pandemic, uh, how we teach uh, uh, neuroscience, psychiatry and brain science is different, so we can use more uh, the media, media, social media, Zoom and Microsoft to, to do more uh, uh, teaching and learning in the field of psychiatry and uh, neuroscience. And since the CMP is an international uh, uh, college, so we have the opportunity to bring uh, our knowledge teaching in uh, psychiatry neuroscience toward the world, uh, in particular in underdeveloped countries. And I think this is the future of a CMP. We have really to play a role international in, uh, in the world for uh, improve mental health condition across uh, populations. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is John Crystal. Uh, I am chair of the International Scientific Program Committee for this meeting. Uh, and I want to acknowledge my co-chairs, Siegfried Kasper from Austria and Noriko Osumi from Japan. I also want to acknowledge the hard work of this group of uh, committee members who uh, both helped to um, solicit uh, submissions to this meeting, but also then reviewed the submissions and helped to shape the program that you have all been enjoying and will continue to enjoy. Next slide. Um, and these are the statistics from the meeting. 
Um, so far, we have one th over a thousand delegates, which is a wonderful turnout. Um, we have uh, 600 attendees from Taiwan, which is a fantastic level of participants with uh, other uh, participants from Japan, the United States, Hong Kong, Ch Canada, Myanmar, uh, Austria, Macau, United Kingdom, Italy. So we have 43 countries that are represented. We have 60 sessions um, in, in this meeting, seven plenary lectures. I, I hope you have enjoyed the lectures so far as much as I have. 19 symposia, seven live sessions in Taipei, um, six TSBPN sessions, and a variety of other sessions as uh, described here, including uh, especially the Raffelson Symposium. Um, we've been very active on social media with 60 new followers, 91 tweets. Um, we had uh, 220 oral and e-posters accepted. So it's been an, an incredibly stimulating, um, it's an incredibly stimulating portfolio of presentations, lively engagement, many different groups of people involved, uh, really overall a wonderful uh, uh, hybrid meeting. Um, before I close, I would like to uh, thank again, Pierre Blier for asking me to serve as ISPC director. I also want to acknowledge our collaboration with our colleagues at ICS, particularly Yannick Bremer, Bremer who's with us uh, today, and um, all of you for your participation. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Let's uh, move on with the report for the fellowships and award uh, committee. So I was uh, chairing this, this committee and at CINP, uh, we've had a long tradition of awarding a variety of prizes to recognize uh, starting from the uh, pillars of our association, the uh, really the older member that have contributed uh, and then going down all the way to the people in uh, in training so we had a very nice composition of people from from around the world and I thank them very much for for their feedback and their in-depth uh, appraisal of the different candidacies so let's uh, move forward so we had the pioneer award like I said the pillars of our associations and then the next down in terms of seniority, we had the brain health clinical research and basic research, the ethics prize, and then the Max Hamilton uh, Memorial Prize, and then the Raphaelson uh, Awards, and finally the Student Encouragement Award. So as you can see, a very big number of, of awardees recognized by our association. So our uh, Pioneer Awards, there were three of them. So we started with uh, the Nancy Andreessen in the meeting, in the presentations. They were all awarded the uh, Arvid Carlson Medal. Arvid Carlson, of course, being a, uh, a fellow in our association, was a Nobel Prize winner and our emeritus uh, number member. So Nancy Andreessen was recognized for her major contributions in the field of uh, schizophrenia and more recently in brain imaging. We weren't able to get a video from her, but we had uh, a verbal uh, testimony. And then the second one was uh, Dr. Thomas uh, Uckfeldt. Of course, uh, even when I was training in the 1970s, uh, he was already uh, quite widely recognized for the identification of the uh, monoaminergic uh, neurons and then more recently working in the field of galanin. And then we had uh, Professor Nabeshima in, from Japan, uh, who also provided us with a video testimony. So that was uh, fantastic. And Professor Nabeshima has had a very long career, illustrious career in the research in psychopharmacology and the number of trainees that he's brought forward, full professors and, and associate and assistant professors was just uh, remarkable. So thank you again for these uh, contributions. 
the Max Hamilton Prize, of course, a more junior uh, prize, was won by Dr. Robert McCutcheon from the United Kingdom in recognition of his groundbreaking work in, uh, in brain imaging, uh, mostly uh, in uh, schizophrenia and as well mood, mood uh, disorders uh, under the uh, mentorship of uh, Professor uh, Alan Young. Next slide. And then as a senior award, uh, the CINP Sumitomo Sunovion uh, Brain Health Re Clinical Research Award. Uh, thank you to uh, the gracious sponsorship of Sumitomo Suvian, Sunovion. Uh, it, was, it was awarded to uh, Dr. Celso Arango, who you, uh, all of you may know as a past president of ECNP, but as well as had the illustrious career in, in research uh, in the ADHD, for example, in the uh, younger individuals. Congratulations, Dr. Arango. And uh, very proud to say that uh, Dr. Gabriela Gobi was the uh, awardee for the CINP Sumitomo Sunovian. So again, many thanks to this uh, great uh, sponsorship. So Dr. Gobi uh, won this award, this Brain Health Basic Research Award, based on their uh, uh, research uh, on uh, various aspects of psychopharmacology, starting from uh, the serotonin transporter and then uh, neuropeptides and moving on to research into uh, melatonin and THC uh, research. Dr. Gobi was uh, instrumental in actually uh, changing some of the government policies in Canada, raising the minimal age to purchase uh, these cannabinoid uh, products. So congratulations, Dr. Gobi, and for your, all your efforts in the CINP. The uh, CINP Ethics Prize uh, was awarded to Dr. Laura Roberts. So here what happened is at the last uh, CINP meeting, it was we had the two candidates, we had Paul Applebaum and Laura Roberts, and the competition was, uh, was uh, so tight and these uh, two people were so deserving. So in the last meeting, Dr. Applebaum was uh, given the, the Ethics Prize. Uh, and then we thought that uh, Dr. L Roberts was so qualified uh, and almost equal with uh, Dr. Applebaum. So the decision was so uh, tight that we decided unanimously to give the prize to uh, Dr. Roberts. So congratulations again for all efforts for ethical issues. And then I had the uh, pleasure of uh, chairing the Raphaelson Investigator Award uh, session. And uh, we had numerous uh, candidates and the three uh, winners really demarcated themselves from, from other candidates. And so we had uh, uh, Professor Miriam Schäler from, from Germany uh, in recognition of her fantastic work in obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, Dr. Samir Joar from the UK for his work in the first episode, Schizophrenia and uh, Brain Imaging, looking at the relationship between the dopamine and the glutamatergic system. And then finally, uh, Jennifer Phillips uh, from, from Canada for her work in brain imaging in treatment resistant patients and more recently in suicide uh, uh, ideators versus uh, attempters. So these were our three winners and it was really my pleasure to uh, um, moderate this session as I was a CINP Raphaelson awardee uh, way back in the 1990. And then we had the CINP uh, Student Encouragement uh, Awards uh, to try to uh, direct these young um, in recognition of these young researchers for uh, their academic career. So we had Ajimi Miyanishi from Japan, Peter Storman from Austria, Yukiko Ochiai from Japan, Patricia Enschok from Austria, Giuseppe Fanelli from Italy, and Chi Ming Chen from Taiwan. So again, a uh, very nice uh, worldwide distribution to these very deserving uh, young candidates. So congratulations again to, to everybody.
Professor Casper. So thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm here turning on the video, my video is directing so. Sorry for this little delay. Dear colleagues, it's my great pleasure to serve as my last duty as a past president. As you heard from Pierre Blier, the, the nomination committee is always chaired by the past president. So together with the committee members, uh, Carol Taminga, Gustavo Turecki, Peter Falkai and Shiku Lin, we had the task to uh, nominate uh, candidates and we asked all the members, you probably remember, the membership got the information which positions are open and we asked them for member for the for the candidates and we took knowledge of the CIMP activity, we took knowledge of the diversity, the scientific interest and also of a ge geographical spread. Then we came up with a slate of candidates and this was done either by telephone or by uh, then Zoom meeting and electronically and this slate of candidates was then presented to the EC and anonymously ratified. So the CMP members and fellows voted then thereafter on an online platform and I think it speaks for the society that the uh, 78.5 percent of the eligible voters voted for the candidates. So may I have the next uh, slide please? Here you see the executive committee of 2020-22 and a few of them which are uh, outlined in blue uh, colors like Katsu and Chikulin and myself will leave the executive committee but uh, uh, most importantly, we have a new president, Joseph Sohar, and a president-elect, Katsu Ikeda, and a vice president, then uh, Dan Ruiescu, and Ming-Chi Huang from Taiwan. So this is the next executive committee, and we are lucky that, uh, as you heard from Pierre Blier, that we have also now three females in our executive committee. And the next slide, you see the council and here was a big turnover, two, four, six uh, had to be replaced by bylaws and uh, then there was the nomination uh, committee selected then the slate and was ratified then by the EC and finally voted by the membership. So Hilary Bloomberg, Atsumi Nita, Julio Licino, then Christiana Atjohan, then Jimei Bai from Taiwan, Hiroshi Uchida and Kim Do from Switzerland were elected as the new council members. So I wish everybody big success and thank the committee and also CMP for having me serving on this most important job. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello again, uh, I'm Kazutaka Ikeda, the Credentials and Membership Committee Chair. I'd like to sincerely thank the members of this committee for their support in the past years, who worked diligently to promote the advantages of CNP membership all over the globe. The committee members were Professor Alan Yang from UK, Professor Elias Eriksson from Sweden, Professor Gabriela Gobi from Canada, Professor Jun Su Kwon from Korea, Professor Lucy Baltova from Austria, and Professor Yasumasa Okamoto from Japan. So next slide please. Yes, thank you. So this table shows an overview of the countries of our new members and their membership level over the course of 2022 and 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, we welcomed 107 new members across 2020 and 2021. The wide distribution of membership underlies the global spread of CNP. I thank uh, committee members and CNP members. So thank you very much. Hi, I'm Tony Grace. I'm the current uh, editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology. 
taking over from the fantastic work that was done by Alan Frazier as the previous editor-in-chief. We've had a very good year over the past year. Our impact factor has increased. We are now above five at 5.176, and we expect it to increase even more over the coming year. We had a virtual field editor meeting in September of 2021. We currently have 50 members of the editorial board with a good male-female distribution, 44% female uh, in, in composition. We also have a good geographical distribution of the submissions, 73 in Asia, 49 in Europe, uh, 42 in North America, in Middle East, and then also in Africa, South America, and Australia. We also have a new tagline for the journal, translational research into brain function and disease to try to expand the scope of the journal and attract more papers. We hope that you can save your, some of your best papers for us. We're certainly increasing in prominence through your efforts, and we hope to increase our impact factor even further. And next slide, please. We also elected the two top cited articles, the clinical and the preclinical papers. These were by far the most cited in 2020 and 2021, and this didn't have to do whether it was one or two years that comprised this, they were most cited regardless. The clinical one was evidence-based guidelines and secondary meta-analysis for the use of transcranial direct current stimulation in neurological and psychiatric disorders by Dr. Prigny. And the preclinical is Bakelin attenuates neuroinflammation by inhibiting NLRP3 caspase-1 GSDMD pathway and MPTP-induced mice model of Parkinson's disease by Dr. Rui et al. We also uh, changed our editorial board composition. We are actually getting many more clinical papers than we have before. So as a consequence, uh, we retired um, one of our editors, uh, field editors involved in molecular since molecular seems to be involved in all of the different uh, aspects of the journal now and uh, brought in Joshua Kentrowitz. So Joshua Kentrowitz and Michael Taves are the two clinical editors, one more on affective and one more on schizophrenia. David Morlack and Carla Gambara on the preclinical side and Ramina Mizrahi doing neuroimaging. And thank you all for your tremendous work and for your very efficient and effective way of getting the papers reviewed and published in a timely manner. I want to thank all the editorial board members uh, especially, I want to thank Ann Miller, the editorial assistant, who's without whose help we wouldn't be able to continue as effectively as we had. Our current OUP uh, representative, Sarah Yanni Tiller, OUP marketing and the production team, as well as the CINP head office for their support. And thank you for your attention. And please do contribute your best papers and keep our journal uh, soaring high. Thank you. So I would like to uh, then proceed to the installation of, uh, of officers and uh, special thanks to Dr. Siegfried Kasper, who actually first served as a counselor at CINP and then uh, was uh, elected uh, pres president and then served for, th for six years in, on the executive committee and more than six years actually because what happened at the beginning of the pandemic, it was decided unanimously that uh, we would uh, keep <clears throat> the current EC when the meeting was postponed from June 20 to February of, of 21. So we thought it would be uh, unfair, for example, for newly elected members, uh, Professor Oquendo and Professor Gobi, to bring them on uh, on the EC in the time of uh, crisis like that. So. Uh, we retained the EC and Dr. Casper actually served uh, for another uh, eight months on the, on the EC as acting president. So this was very uh, gracious of him. As well, I would like to uh, thank Shiku Lin, who has served for four years as uh, vice president and has worked very hard, as you know, because uh, we had uh, actually two meetings in, in Taiwan. So we really did our best to visit his, his home country for this meeting, but we were not able to do it because of COVID restrictions. So that's why we could not travel to, uh, to Taiwan. So at least Professor Zohar and I were keeping our fingers crossed to be able to go on the island, but we were not able to, to do it. 
So uh, welcome to uh, new members of the EC for their uh, new role because uh, Professor Zohar uh, actually stepped down from his uh, vice presidency to run for the uh, president uh, position and was uh, elected. So Professor Zohar is uh, as co had come to us with uh, a lot of experience on various international organizations and as well as past president of ECNP. Similarly, Professor Ikeda had a long track record for serving in the Asian uh, societies. And uh, as you know, and as you saw, uh, uh, we served the CINP for four years as treasurer and did a fantastic job. So he knows exactly how the executive committee functions and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, keeping him on and uh, leading CINP uh, in the next uh, six years. Uh, Professor Rujescu is all probably all well known to us as well, coming from uh, Austria and uh, as a wide experience again in this field. So we're really uh, looking for his input as one of the two vice presidents of our association. And then finally, uh, Ming-Chi Wang, who was uh, serving a term on the CINP councils and decided to run for uh, an executive uh, committee position and was elected uh, treasurer. So as you can see here in the, the executive committee, we've maintained our global uh, distribution for these uh, seven positions. So congratulations and uh, welcome. So it's uh, now my uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Professor uh, Zohar, our new president. Thank you very much, Pierre, and thank all for you for coming. I think my first role as president is really to thank Pierre Blier, who has been doing a fantastic job in running uh, the CNP during this challenging time. Uh, and uh, it's really, uh, uh, I would like to thank him for doing this and doing it uh, during this challenging period with the COVID and all the, all the other implication of the COVID. And uh, of course, uh, only small token of appreciation is that you'll receive the Arvid Carlson Award that will give it to you when uh, we, ah, we find the right opportunity. Um, but Pierre, of course, is staying with us uh, not only as past president, but only uh, he will uh, run the meeting next year in Montreal. So again, Pierre, thanks. Uh, uh, what you have done is highly appreciated, not obvious. And uh, <clears throat> I, and I think all the members of the EC are very thankful to you. Um, there are four buzzwords that I was told that uh, you need to say each time that you are talking about the future. I'm not going to use any of them. Next. So basically, and I think uh, the ECNP in looking forward for the CNP is making sure that we are focusing on the global aspect of CINP. As uh, you know, there are four continental neuropsychopharmacology colleges, the American College, European College, the Asian College and the African College. And I think we, as we just started to do, moving from uh, moving to annual meeting, and I think it would make sense to rotate among the different continents. And as we are doing now, 
do it in collaboration with the local relevant scientific organization. We are doing it now. We are going to do it in a next year meeting in Tokyo. We are going to do it uh, in the next meeting <clears throat> in 24 in Montreal. And I think this is very important um, move to do this meeting in collaboration with the local relevant scientific organization. Um, I was thinking that we need, and of course, everything that I'm saying here is just kind of preliminary thought and any feedback from any of you is more than a welcome. So I was thinking that we need to do thematic network, uh, kind of doing, uh, focusing on burning scientific issue. I gave some example, personalized medicine, re resilience, inflammation, digital tool, big data, PUI, problematic use of internet, etc. And, uh, and there will be rooms and time slots for those network to meet. And in between the meeting, uh, we'll uh, try to organize Zoom meeting uh, to keep the network active and uh, vibrant uh, throughout the year. I believe that providing this kind of inexpensive Zoom meeting structure those thematic scientific collaboration as the potential of bridging between the different continent, enabling members to write collaborative uh, scientific paper, submit uh, international grant and propose symposia for future CNP meeting, and moreover, in incorporating the thematic network in the annual meeting, uh, it has the potential of strengthening the annual meeting uh, by giving uh, an extra initiative to participate. Next slide, please. Uh, we are doing it to some extent, but I think it needs to be uh, extended uh, special track uh, at World Congress for Clinician, something like Clinical Frontier, and actually two. One is update, focusing on new t development in the treatment of psychiatric disorder, and the other is more along the line of uh, meet the expert. Clinical cases will be discussed in small group with international expert. Uh, next slide. Uh, I think we need to take care, and it was mentioned by Gabriela and by other, an early career initiative. So uh, labeling some of the Congress content as early career content, pre-meeting a workshop as we are doing now, uh, doing post-plenary educational workshop, uh, kind of having the opportunity of uh, the early career uh, individual to meet personally with the speaker uh, in the plenary. And then announcing special program for select, selected group of early career members. We need to think about the theme uh, with expected outcome uh, is a research project to be published in scientific journal. Our journal or other uh, journal, we need to think about it uh, uh, in the future. But I think the focus of the idea is that we'd like to make sure that early career uh, members would uh, have a specific place and specific role in uh, the CNP uh, in general and the, in, in the CNP annual meeting in particular. Next slide. 
And uh, last point is regarding, and we are doing, we started now, but we need to improve ongoing update regarding the activity of the CNP in order to improve membership registration and payment process. And we need to uh, uh, do, uh, to improve the process, adjusting the membership fee according to the whole bank uh, uh, criteria. And uh, most importantly, create com community sense uh, among the CNP member. This is some preliminary thoughts and uh, I would be very happy uh, to get some suggestion, feedback, comments from everyone. Please feel free to uh, write me about this. Uh, so basically, next slide. I think this is what I wanted to say. Uh, thank you again for all the members for attending. And if there is any question, any comments, uh, if you can uh, speak up, it would be more than welcome, or you can write it in a chat. Uh, and uh, if you, if it's not, if you would like in the future to write to me, as I mentioned, please do. Um, and thank you for uh, uh, choosing me as the president. I know that it is uh, 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 challenging and I'll try to stand up to the challenge. Thank you.